It's been just a steady stream for the last three hours behind her at the airport this morning. A reminder, by the way, Orange County is not going to be hosting coronavirus testing today at schools. That testing will start back up again tomorrow. Of course, school's not in session today. From 4 to 8 p.m., you'll find that at Avalon Elementary. Remember, this is only for students, parents, and staff there that work at Avalon. Well, mask mandates, they are certainly back in the spotlight in two local districts this week. The Volusia County School Board, they're planning an emergency meeting where they will discuss their mask policy. policy. It's going to be held Thursday night, September 9th at 6 o'clock inside the administrative complex. That is in Deland. The meeting is open to the public. It's going to be streamed on the district website. The district's current mandate goes into effect tomorrow. And in Lake County, the school board will vote on a proposed mask policy on Thursday. It would require schools with the highest number of COVID cases to require masks until cases drop. Parents, however, would be allowed to opt their ch children out. We do have a full list of mask rules and mandates for each school district. To find it, just go to fox35orlando.com and click on the coronavirus tab. Right now, parents across Florida are really picking sides when it comes to masks and children when they attend a school. We've seen a lot of heated debates and joining us live to look into this further is former Senate President Mike Herodopoulos. Mike, thanks for sticking around. Good to see you again. My pleasure, Ryan. Thanks. So we've talked about this for a couple of weeks and it's kind of moved in the direction we anticipated where more schools have done this. Now we've got vaccines maybe coming out in the next month, which will take this in a different way. But boy, it's really been from district to district. A lot of change in the last two weeks. It sure has, Ryan. It's been a very emotional issue, as you can imagine, right now, as the school boards and, and others are facing angry parents on both sides. It's a very emotional issue. But let me stress, first and foremost, as Governor DeSantis has said since day one, if you have not received the vaccine, go and get the free vaccine. It's, it's very effective, as, as you may know. In my home community, of the 500 deaths in our county in Brevard, only one of those were fully vaccinated. And so the, you know, the odds are definitely in your favor if you get vaccinated. But that said, there's a big fight going on on who decides. And as Governor DeSantis has kind of dug in his heels here, he said that parents should have the final say. And that under this Florida law, the law passed last year, the Parents' Bill of Rights, that Florida citizens should allow their parents to make these decisions as opposed to the school board making these decisions. But as you know, the school boards, I think now 11 of them have said, nope, we're going to require masks anyway. And I think you'll see this go all the way up to the federal courts to decide this important issue. Yeah, I think so. And we're going to see eventually vaccines available. But I think the hospitalizations what a lot of these schools are watching and it's even hard to get those numbers. But those are the numbers they watch. And we've talked a lot about monoclonal antibodies, Mike. And I think people know they're all around. They've heard the governor talk about these a lot, but do they really know what difference they can make. Well, the numbers are staggering and a positive. If you have the symptoms coming on, there are 21 sites across the country, so obviously across the state of Florida. They're open from 9 to 5. If you have the symptoms, and even whether you're vaccinated or not, you're allowed to go there. It's free of charge. They've been very successful in, in helping those people at the early onset of COVID-19. And again, this is something the governor is encouraging. If you choose not to get a, the shot and you get this terrible uh uh, virus, go to you, one of these 21 sites. You just type in Florida and, and you'll see that those sites will come up. They're open from 9 to 5. The, the lines are not that long. These are the real ways to solve the problem and maybe save your life so you don't have to go to the hospital, et cetera, where you can even be in more uh, danger with other people there with, of course, COVID-19. So the governor has been very aggressive about this. Again, 21 sites. They're open from 9 to 5. If you have these symptoms, go there and take care of the problem. Yeah, the results all seem remarkable in some cases. Let's shift gears now. Talk about the Democratic primary. We're less than a year away from this, Mike, and obviously people wait to get big money until they see who the front runner is. I feel like Nikki Freed has been very active, uh, obviously challenging the governor, but getting her name out there. But yet, and some people think that Chris would be the front runner. How, what's your take on this right now? Well, this is going to be a hotly contested race. Nikki Free, the current agricultural commissioner, the only statewide elected official who's a Democrat, has taken off the gloves and have gone very aggressively against Charlie Crist. As we talked about in the last hour with this very controversial law in Texas dealing with abortion rights, she's going directly at Charlie Crist and saying, Charlie Crist is flip-flopping on abortion. He used to be pro-life. Now he's pro-choice. And she's being very aggressive with the former governor. I expect this to be a hotly contested primary, as you and I have discussed. And and it seems like the more and more this primary goes on, the nastier it's going to get. And the further left, both candidates are going to try to go to get those Democratic primary voters to vote for them to take on the governor, Ron DeSantis. Yeah, it's a challenge because you got to run to left to the win of the primary, but then you got to run back to the middle to try and beat DeSantis next year. 
Great analysis, Ryan. That's exactly the case. Plus, they don't have the resources that Governor DeSantis has. So they'll probably come out of this primary with very few resources. And Ron DeSantis instead can run to the center as we get ready for the election next November. It's going to be a very aggressive race on both sides. And, of course, the U.S. Senate race is also waiting in the wings. I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out. By the way, any voting in your future today on the rest of Labor Day? Absolutely. And we were up late last night watching Florida State and uh, Mr. Milton on the comeback tour. What a game. A uh, little tired this morning. I'm glad you stayed up for it. I couldn't, but great to see McKinsey back. Mike, good to talk to you. Have a great uh, day, my friend. Always a pleasure, Ryan. Have a great week. Thank you. This just in an ex.